They're gonna put me in the movies They're gonna make a big star out of me Play the part about a man who's sad and lonely And all you gotta do is act naturally And all you gotta do is watch preface with Pacho Man! Yeah, Pacho, bringing it home. We are brought to you by EAS Sports Nutrition, Hoka One One, Polar, Osco Wellness, Fellow Fix, and on Sunday we'll have our championship edition at Four Seasons Hualalai. Trathonworld.com is where we are airing our next guest. Coach extraordinaire, Mr. Cliff English. How you doing, Cliff? I'm doing great, Bob. Thank you so much for a having me. An again. annual tradition, buddy. Always good. So first, let's start with the Sun Devil on your shirt here, because NCAA and triathlon, that used to be an, sort of an oxymoron. <laughs> but now, that's a reality where we have for the women, have a, it's an NCAA sport. Yes. Talk it's a little bit about what you're doing. Sport. So yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, it's Get this as, guy a little closer. As we've seen, I mean, it's existed as a collegiate club sport. Yeah. And some of the clubs are incredibly strong all through the West Coast and uh, University of Colorado up in Boulder. Very strong teams. But, yeah, we, we've uh, accepted it. It's been accepted as an emerging sport for women's triathlon. Yeah. Draft legal format, sprint distance. Incredibly exciting. ASU is the first of the Division One, Power 5, Pac-12 schools to take it on. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of the family with them. It's a... Uh, been a great environment it's it's been a big year it's yeah. uh, a lot of things that i wouldn't have even foreseen you know i've been coaching for many many years and and uh you know but to build a program from zero you know no bikes no equipment no <laughs> we, you know it's one of those where, like we have a pool <laughs> but uh yeah step one yeah step one but uh it, it was yeah it was it was amazing so many things kept you know coming forward along the way you're like oh Wow, didn't think about that or administratively, but it's just been in, incredible for me to learn new things and really be challenged more than I thought it would have been, but at the same time, just to, to, to keep coming out and just seeing the sport grow. So yes. we have eight young women right now, and, well, one joining us in January and seven right now. Uh, we got an official visit coming up with about another six young women. I um, mean, the recruits, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, every time I look at my inbox is, you know, I'm probably looking at 12 to 15 a week and people are just so interested. And we're at 16 teams right now that have taken it on. Yeah. Uh, a, lo a lot of D2, D3 schools. Yep. Um, but we know a lot of other schools are talking with USA Triathlon. So uh, it's great that USA Triathlon is guiding this as well with uh, uh, Jessica Lu Lewinsky and yes. uh, Lucinski, sorry, and uh, Tim Yount, also part of it. And uh, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the good old people at USAT that are that are helping. And and the, the cool thing for what I think is so exciting about it is it's growing the sports, growing women new people. In sport. Yeah, and you know, getting them exposed to the draft legal format. I mean, USA Triathlon already has a lot of incredible programs in place. You know, the junior development programs, yep. the races, the camps that they do, and even when you look at after university, where Gwen jo Jorgensen and, and, and Katie Zafaris have come from with the college recruitment with, program. Yeah, Barb Lindquist, yeah. Yeah, you know, incredibly exciting, but you know, this is, adds another avenue, another channel that we can continue this development. So a lot of us coaches have looked at this for years, and I've always been in, you know, in the back of my mind, like, you know, in the right situation, if it looked, you know, the, in the right environment, and after I met you know, the people, my, the senior administrators at ASU, I'm like, I think this is it. This is a good place. And, and you know, I mean, look what they, you know, they hired Bob Bowman. You know, they're, they're a school on the move. You know, Phelps is coming on, you know, as an assistant coach. They already have. Michael Phelps going to be an assistant <laughs> coach? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's going on. I mean, wow. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. I mean, they have Misty Hyman, an Olympic gold medalist. And we brought on Aaron Densham, who's three-time yes. Olympian, bronze medalist from London. So, you know, we're. We're just excited to surround the kids with great people, and at the same point, every time we're going to races and you know meeting some of these other coaches, and you know a lot of the teams, like our our last race we just had in Greensboro, all four of our girls have never done draft legal before. So it's you know I definitely while we all are looking at that possibility of the Olympic Channel, we're mm -hmm. also looking at growing the sport and getting people to participate. And you know, also be able to get a, an education. I mean, you know, we so they're getting scholarships. We have five and a half scholarships in our first year. How you know? fun is that? It's amazing. In right? the sport of triathlon. In the sport of triathlon. That is you know? cool. You know, so when you think about looking back, you know, for five years, fast forward, imagine we could all pack twelve in there, and then people can now actually go and do the sport they love, and and maybe come out in four years, go on Olympic trials, and yeah, they and had so an education. 
Yeah. They, they got their education well. paid for. Yeah. They can move on and potentially become an Olympian. Yeah. And then if they want to, move on and 70.3 in Ironman. So the, Absolutely. basically it's, it's creating a career from the moment you get into college. Yeah. And so like when they're not, you know, going and just running, they're actually able to continue doing the sport they're already at. Because I mean, they're, I mean, look right now, you know, we junior world champion in, in, you know, U.S. Taylor Nib, you know, so it's like, in, and I know she's going to run, which is a great choice as well. But I think, you know, in a few years, we'll see more options for, for these right. kids, you know, with ASU. But we look at it, it's more than just us. We want to grow this and see all the schools. We want to see Cal, we want to see of UCLA. Course. Oregon, you know, you name it. Let's let's bring it on. More so the merrier. It's exciting. So I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. So here we are in Kona. Last year, Leanna Cave, the 2012 champion, was in phenomenal shape. Crashed on the bike, and we talked to her about it the other day. And I mean, she was really really bummed. I mean, as you get into your you know mid to late 30s, you never know when that opportunity is going to come again. Her condition this year, you're working with Leanna still. Yep. Uh, is she ready to have a great one? I think she is. And she's in a really, really good place. And, and we had spoken a little yeah. um, prior to this conversation. You know, when you have that kind of fitness and mm -hmm. then have it end the way it did last year, you know, you definitely are wondering, like, why? What, what, what I do wrong? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so, you know, we definitely, she took a long break and been building up. And, and it's been good. I mean, she has so many years, you know, in, uh, in her as an athlete. And, you know, she's been healthy. So that's a huge part of it. Right now, she's gotten the hunger back. She's healthy and she's happy. So... I think she's in a really good place. Who are some of the other athletes you're working with here? Uh, I have Liz Lyles here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Liz has had a great year, you know, Wildflower winner. Yep. Uh, new course record in Brazil. We just saw her in, at Challenge Penticton. Uh, yeah. She was second up there. And yeah. she won Wisconsin. Yes. So, yeah, you know, we're, we're you know, she's she's rested, and, you know, we, we decided to go for some big races and some wins, and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll roll the dice, and she's, you know, rested and in a good place. And then, yeah. How do you balance? You're, 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 you've got draft legal, right? Yeah. You've got the college system. And there's always bureaucracy when you're working with a, a big company or a big group. And then you're dealing with the, you know, with your Ironman athletes. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting balance. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah. I, just everyone is important to me. And, and when I took the position with ASU, and they, were, they knew, you know, that I'm a professional coach and that, you know, obviously there was some understanding that I was, going to cut back on, on my roster but right. obviously I'm still going to remain current with coaching my pros Ironman I had two athletes at the Olympics in Rio with Ashley Gento and Leonardo Chacon as yes well. so I mean that's what they want I mean you know Bob Bowman was still coaching the U.S. Olympic team yes and, he was you know so it's it's gives it, credibility yeah absolutely. and you're going recruiting yeah uh, and you're trying to get kids coming to your school the fact that you have an Ironman world champion and you've got X number of Olympians, yeah. that, that helps you recruit. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what they want. They want that experience. They want that guidance. How do you think, do you think the NCAA program can get? Is this something where, like you said, how many teams? How many 16. Schools? 16 now? Is that something within the next three, four years? It could be 30? I, I hope so. I mean, I certainly would like to see, I mean, we have 10 years to get to 40 teams. It's, then you go from emerging sport to actually being a sport. So, wow, I mean, 10 years, okay. I know even with USA Triathlon, we're all a little more ambitious. We think hopefully it can be done in three or four. Yes. I mean, when you look at it, it's, it's a no-brainer for some, you know? It just kind of, they already have strong programs. And, and to be able to offer scholarships, to be able to do more for these student athletes, to give them more, you know, even that more well-rounded, not just being an athlete, but to be a student athlete right. means so much more, so. When these kids are coming in, you're recruiting these kids out of high school, are, are, are most of them seasoned triathletes or some of them coming in sort of as a swim run type of people who you're going to need to teach to ride the bike? Yeah. So, yeah, real mix. Um, some of my freshmen were swim runners in high school. and you So know, then when you to recruit them, you look at what their PR is for 5K, what their PR is. For, yeah. And, and the, is the distance a sprint distance? It is a sprint okay, distance. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, you're looking at mile, you're looking at like, um, you know, two mile, right. 5K, that kind of thing. Uh, definitely some swim, like 500, 100 as well in the pool. And yeah, you know, we, I, my team is quite well-rounded. I had some very experienced athletes. Um, one of the young women, Katie Gorsica, actually represented Team USA at Cozumel okay. for the under 23. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a German girl, Charlotte Ahrens, who uh, was on the German national team as a junior as well. So I wanted to get Know, some w good established well-rounded triathletes and then i ha have some development kids that i really think can really over the next few years develop and then obviously the recruiting never ends so i'm looking to kind of build out the team maybe another three or four this for this next class 
Uh, I also brought someone on that graduated from University of Pennsylvania, Amy Darlington, who was a runner. She actually has a school record in, um, of course, I'm going to forget it right now. What's the one? Uh, oh, my God. Steeple, right? Oh, Steeple yeah, Chase. Yes. Chase. Yeah. My favorite course, event. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, so yeah. she's a strength athlete. She's oh, got yeah. a 441 mile under her belt. She swam in high school. But, you know, that was the one thing that we did not have in our program. We didn't have seniors. We didn't have, you know, That's someone. Right. So, yeah. you know, she was team captain cross country. So she's been a nice dynamic. So she's come to do her 50-year eligibility and doing a master's. So, you know, I'll get my scholarship money back for next year. And I can, you yes. know, recruit a younger one, uh, you know, like a freshman or, or get another transfer. But I wanted to, you know, that first year I was really thinking of the dynamic, really thinking of the composition of the team. To be sort of a leader. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's worked out well. We're having a lot of fun. And, and at the same time, just going to races talking with a lot of the other ra you know coaches yeah helping them out you know and 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 that that's it we really just want to grow this you know and we really encourage uh, actually there's a few schools in arizona that are that are quite interested in adding it and one of them has approached us and you know we're just like hey you know we'll show you our budget whatever right. you need you know we want full, well, you want it yeah you, we you want know, yeah you know it sort of reminds me of I remember, <laughs> you know rudy garcia tolson uh, early on to get into the paralympics yeah he needed more people in his category, yeah, right? Totally. He, he you couldn't like, just, if he's the only <laughs> double above the amputee, there's no category. Yeah, yeah. You need more schools. Yeah, exactly. You, know what? you, you yeah. want more schools out there. Yeah. When you look back at this race, because you've been here a number of times now, what are some of your moments that stick out to you, some of your favorite times on this island with your athletes? <laughs> I mean, as you know, I mean, you have to, I think when you've been coming here for many years, and I think even as a coach, even as an athlete, and been in it a long time, the biggest thing if you're gonna have a long career is you, you have to be able to take it in stride you sure. gotta like sometimes take that deep breath and just look around remember like All right, here we are yeah yeah here, we're not yeah. digging holes yeah. in the ground yeah this is what we do for a living exactly because sometimes yeah you know you can come and and, and kona is that one goal and mm -hmm. and yeah and it can end up being like well goal didn't get met you know i've had athletes that we come and and we've been like wow you know just it kona shuts sure. down and then other times I've, I've had some incredible highs with athletes you know and and but that's the ebb and flow of of, of a racer and ebb and flow of coaching right. um i mean obviously you know for first time with with uh samantha mcglone yes. you know is, is obviously a highlight but that you know that was this incredible race and what you get second second yeah, yeah first ever our man and you know just <laughs> coming out of the gates first marathon. you're like yeah how hard is this yeah, i am I the coach this. of the century what's the big deal <laughs> exactly i think there's a lot i'm gonna of retire in about three yeah, years i'll yeah. win a few of these titles boom done exactly and i think the biggest thing i mean for for athlete and coach is realizing that there, there's always a process you know you 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 have to you're not going to get here if you don't go through those steps, you yes. know, and I think some of the athletes I've worked with in the past that, you know, they've kind of come like Tim, it's great to see him going on and, and last year getting third. And, you know, when, when the years that I worked and developed him, yes. you know, see him get eighth and fifth, you know, and it, it's nice, you know, it's one of those things where I still, you know, feel part of it. And it's of great to see, you know, your yeah. athletes doing well. And, um, but yeah, it's one of those, you don't always get it in your first one and you just, uh, you don't have to keep at it, but it's, yeah, I've had some great moments here and great, yeah, just great always every year seeing, bumping into old friends. <laughs> What's going to be cool is you're probably in, you know, the number of years you're going to be going from someone who started with you at NCAA yeah. who's going to be coming here. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, and it's, they're all excited too. Cause I also have a third girl, uh, Asa Lundstrom yes. who got 11th last year. So you know, she's she's going really well. She's so relaxed too. So uh, it's really exciting to see with her. You know, that's awesome. Good dark horse, and yeah, you know, I just and someone like that. If you when you finish eleventh, man, you could be on the podium. Oh yeah, you know, it's 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 when you're looking at. it, I think it was only eighty-seven seconds to get in the ninth, ninth last year. You know, so it's you know you're fighting for positions. We've seen it now. I mean, that's what's so amazing about women in sport every it's as tight as the men's race no now question. you know in iron man 70.3 and for me as a coach i mean it's just a privilege to be able to do all the different disciplines right. it's it's fun to challenge yourself that way that's what i love i love the coach to be able to do draft legal to have olympians have iron man yeah. i mean it's 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 what i do and it and it and it makes you a better coach for for staying relevant in all the disciplines so i i really try to do my best in yeah. all that and uh i think all the kids that are they're actually racing in berkeley this oh. weekend so it was it was too bad we had uh, both on the same weekend yeah. but uh they're in good hands with the assistant coach uh, aaron dencham and you know they're they're excited that i'm over here they're like oh we're gonna watch and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so it's good what are when you have someone who's racing here for the first time a pro what tips do you give them because it's you know every other race you do there's three four five good pros right yeah. you come here and it's the 
you know, it's basically a Hall of Fame roster. Yeah, You've absolutely. got, for the women, there's, you know, 30 people who finish, they think they can finish top 10. Yeah. And they're not wrong. Yeah. And the same for the guys. What is the information that you share with your athletes so that they don't get overwhelmed? Yeah. It's, you know, a lot of that starts further out in your preparation. You know, you're getting them prepared for it. You don't just show up and be like, all right, hey, here's the deal with Kona. You know, you got to be like able to problem solve. But you definitely are telling them along the way, you know, this is why we're doing this session. This is how you have to think. It was the same thing, you know, Heather, that was her first year last year and she got fifth, you know. So, you know, I think that was an incredible debut. But basically just put her in the mindset of like, you know, you have to be present. You have to own your own race. You got to execute like you've done it before. And that's easier said than done. And I know it sounds so simple. Yeah. But a lot of times it's just like, you know, you're like, this is where you need to be. This is, is, you know, exactly where you need to be right now. Be in that moment, linger in that moment. Don't look ahead of it. Just own that. Mm-hmm. And then it's, like I said, it's a different approach, but I mean, it's very much probably very similar to, to maybe Mark a little bit, Mark Allen, in, in terms of you, uh, you could just do what you can do in that moment. Try to do it the best you possibly can do in that moment. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, sometimes it's just turning the pedal strokes at 92 RPM and you're just sipping on a drink and you're like, hey, just being patient. So the biggest thing I always teach is to be patient, you know, and I think um, it's interesting with, with that race last year, it pretty much unfolded uh, exactly as I thought. I was mm-hmm. like, look, by the end of the bike, you're going to probably be moving somewhere between 12th and 15th be here then it's like we he drive just keep your cool that's you know some people go a little too quick you got to just like take a few miles get your rhythm then once you get up there that's where all the real action you might see 11th and all of a sudden you're ninth then all of a sudden it's like you know coming on energy lab and that's pretty much how exactly. it goes yeah, the fifth, yeah. Jack, yeah. The fifth place yeah you know and it, it's it's one of those things i mean it's yeah, to be top 10 at this race is incredible you know i think obviously as athletes are developing over time it's like yeah then the podium, then the win, you know, and you see some people, you know, have, have that, they hit it. And then the next year, you're like, okay, now I'm going for that one next spot up. And right. then it doesn't, it's, it's a tricky one. You have to have so many things that go well for you. And I think it's a mindset. I mean, look at all our, you know, it's, I, I watched uh, you with Peter the other day. Yes. Peter's always been a good old friend and it's just, you know, great to hear him, you know, talk about his old stories. And, you know, he had that mental package and we, we learned a lot from Pete for Sam, you know, coming in. I mean, he was a great mentor to her and, you know, he always was really big on patience and the problem solving yes. component, you know, and that's that's why I always thought Tim would be a great racer here, you know, it's just the the engine's one thing. It's what you do up here on this, you know, yes, especially here. <laughs> so on race day, basically your work is done. Yeah. What, what do you do to try not to go absolutely out of <laughs> I'll, your mind? I'll be out surfing? No, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, with this course being a closed course, you can't really do much in the bike. Right. You can, yeah. you know, drive up the quite high and, and, and be there. You know, sometimes it does help for an athlete to see you if yes. you're just that calming, yep. you know, person that they see like, oh, okay, and you just reinforce you're where you're at. Fine, you're doing fine. Yeah. yeah, you know, it, the, big, the big thing is the run, you know, just being able to be out there. You know, obviously, I, I always call it leapfrogging, you know, you, 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 and I think it's, you know, it's definitely something as coaches and the sport's grown, hopefully we can continue to address. You know, you always want to have integrity and fair play. And, you know, I've always made a point, like, get your feet firm on the ground, give them a split. You know, right. you can't travel. Even if you, spin, you know, go flying by on a bike, get ahead, get some splits, give them the info, you know. Right. So a lot of times for me as a coach, I'm just... I spend maybe the first 10 miles is more process and just mm-hmm. cues what's and going just, on. Yeah, yeah. And just telling them like, hey, you're looking good. Just think about this head position cadence, you know, those right. little like just the basics. Yep. But, you know, you definitely don't want to like, oh, yeah, hey, 17 the riff, you know, that that doesn't help anyone. You no. know, you just kind of get you want them to get, kind of find it, get the rhythm. Then you start, you know, all right, you're here. Just focus on that next downhill, good body position, 78 right. seconds, top 10 is right there, there's three girls running together. You know, you can do little things like that and you give those little bite-sized, you know, chunks. They know what we're doing too, and I always spilled all the beans, but they're like, I know what he's doing. <laughs> I love Don't that. fool me, but uh, yeah, no, but you're just really trying to keep, because that's the biggest part of it. We, everyone in life, as people and athletes, we always look too far ahead. And sure. You just got to be there. And it's Stay like, we're just moment. kind of giving them exactly. There's a the little bits of like, hey, here's a carrot, you're moving. And I try to get some splits and some ideas of who's moving well, mm-hmm. who isn't. So I'll kind of say, hey, so-and-so in this position, you're putting in 15 seconds a mile. This is my, ca-. you know, so you're really doing a lot of calculations and you're, you know, because obviously top 10, you know, is, is, is so coveted. But then if you're in position, you know, you never know. And then it's top fives knocking, then it's podium. I mean, so much can happen in this race. Especially the last few yeah. miles out here. So you just try to give them really good information. And, and, and at sometimes sometimes being able to make that call. And it's, it's interesting because all the years I've been coaching, sometimes 
yeah, you're right. It's on autopilot. And then sometimes you maybe make one or two where you say something and, and after, you know, the athlete's like, man, what you just said, that really helped me. I just think it got me a little out of the funk and I just mm -hmm. focused on getting that run rhythm back. You know, I was thinking maybe about my ABC drill, I think counted cadence a little bit, yeah. got my rhythm and got me back in, you know? So sometimes, you know, you're just looking for those moments, but not trying to force them either. Love it. Cliff, always a pleasure. <laughs> Have a great day tomorrow. Congrats on the ASU deal. I love that triathlon is in the NCAA and it's going to get bigger and bigger. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Bob. All right. Cliff English has been our guest. Pacho Man, take us out. They're going to put me in the movie. They're going to make a big star out of me. Play the part about a man who's dead and lonely. And all you got to do is act naturally. And all I got to do is watch Breakfast with Bob.